Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 34 of Tour of Japan, the review series for Gran Turismo 6's pretty wide selection of Super GT class machines. And in this episode we're featuring another variant of the Nissan GTR lineup. This is the R35 generation of course, and this is probably the most visually eye-catching model of the GTR GT500 models. It's the Team Yellow Hat GTR. And like all of the other GTRs, not only of the R35 generation, but of all racing GTRs, JGTC class or otherwise, it's a very strong all-round race car. Now for sheer spec, this car has the exact same overall numbers as the Team Wood One GTR. So as with some of the other Super GT models, but at the same time not as many as you'd probably expect, this is really a case of which model you prefer the look of, rather than which one is strictly speaking better. So that's pretty much the end of the episode. <laughs> but of course there is more to talk about than that, because the GTR is a very obvious choice of Super GT car, but does that automatically make it the best? Because just because everyone uses it doesn't necessarily mean it's all that it's made out to be. There are plenty of vehicles on racing games which get far more use in comparison to their rivals than they really deserve to. Because just because a vehicle has the best specs, that doesn't necessarily mean it is the best vehicle to choose. Now the GTR is a strong all-round car, I'll give it that for sure. And I'm not saying that it's a bad car by any means. For most tracks, the GTR is a very strong machine in all of its generations, but especially the R35. And for sheer overall specs, it is an impressive machine. It has a 4.5 litre engine, produces 928 horsepower, 668 foot-pounds of torque. It only weighs 1100 kilos, which is on the much lower end of the GT500 spectrum sits at one of the highest PP levels of any JGTC car of, at 664 and puts out an almost class leading 844 horsepower per tonne. So it's certainly not weak all round. The price, like all of the other R35 GTRs, is 950,000 credits. And in terms of overall performance, its straight line and trackability are pretty much on par with any of the other R35s. Why then choose this model? Is it just a case of it's yellow, so buy it if you like yellow cars? Well, to some degree, yeah, it is. Because it has virtually identical performance to the other R35s. But, that said, each GTR, as similar as they are, do feel slightly different to each other. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's a massive registrable difference between each of the cars, such as one is good on twisty tracks, but another may be better on high speed tracks. It's not that kind of a difference. It's more a difference where the cars feel different in more of their personality if it's possible for a car to have a personality which of course it isn't but the cars do definitely feel different to drive the team wood one the nismo the yellow hat they do each feel unique in their own different way now i'm not sure if that's just a a subliminal placebo effect where you want them to be different so you just assume that they are but to me each of them do feel different and although its performance in a straight line is fairly similar, if not exactly the same, to the other GTRs, I would say that this car does feel different to some of the others. This is the GTR which, like the Yellow Hat Supra, from what I've seen, tends to be the one that many people go for, for fairly obvious reasons. There aren't many people who don't like yellow, and yellow is a very eye-catching colour. It's my favourite colour. And it's a popular colour for racing cars that want to stand out. So it's not too surprising that it's one of the most popular models. 
Personally, my favourite version of the GTR is actually the Team Wood one, with the blue and silver. But this car is also very good in its own right, and if I remember correctly, this was the first GTR that I bought as a JGTC spec model. It comes with a fully detailed interior, and overall, the GTR is a very strong, if not the strongest, all-round JGTC GT500 model. There are certain tracks where I would not necessarily recommend using it, not that it's bad, but just there are others that may perhaps be better. But overall, if you are looking for a strong Super GT machine in the higher of the two classes, the GTR is a pretty safe bet to go for. I would however recommend giving some others a try, just to be different, because they're all capable of winning. So, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.